welcome to Learning Finance, the series that briefly explains a concept from finance and provide you with an example. My name is Stefan Eriksson and here in episode number four, we're going to be discussing annuities. And before we get there, we have to briefly go over what are streams of cash flows, just like we did in the previous episode, but uh, just to be sure you guys get it. So most investments, they have a cash flow that takes place in more than one period of time. As you can see on this screen here now, we have now a little timeline here, which depicts cash flow C0 at time zero. We have cash flow C1 at time one, cash flow C2 and time two, and so forth, as long as the investment takes place, for instance, right? Following the rules we laid out in a previous episode, in order to compare all these, we have to convert them to one point in time. And that was easiest done with something known as the present value. That is that we take all values from the future and basically pull back until today. And we do that by discounting them with an appropriate, well, interest rate or discount rate, what you would like to call in this case here. So what is it? The present value is just equal to, well, the sum of all these discounted future cash flows that you didn't sum up, which we can express in the following way. PV for present value, mathematical operator for sum from time zero up until n given point in the future. And of course, that can be rewritten as just the discount of all these cash flows CN discounted by the appropriate amount R to the same time N. So they match, right? The thing is, that's pretty cool. It holds for everything. But the problem is when you get a lot of links or a lot of sets or a lot of amounts, basically, this becomes very messy and very time consuming. Consuming. And the thing is here, there are a few shortcuts for certain patterns. Fortunately, we discussed perpetuities, but now we're going to talk about what is an annuity. And what it basically is, it's a stream of n equal cash flows that occur at regular intervals. Notice here that it's n cash flows, which that is indeed right, meaning me. Unlike a perpetuity, an annuity ends after some fixed number of payments. You can see what has been depicted here with a red circle. There's an ending time here. It's going to stop at time n. It doesn't go on forever like a perpetuity. Real life examples. The first one that springs to mind is, say, a mortgage. Common, you have a mortgage for 30 years when you pay out your house, of course. And of course, that is an annuity because typically it's set such that you pay the same amount every month up until a certain point in time, say 30 years you pay once a month. That is a very standard example of an annuity. Now we also have a formula which we can put all this together in one neat expression to calculate annuities. And well, how do we do it? Let's see what it becomes. It becomes, there's something missing here. One second, we can do better. There we go. It is unfortunately not as easy as the perpetuity, which was C divided by R. We have this additional term coming after. But overall, this is not a formula you should be so afraid of. It is actually very, very easy to apply. So no need to worry. Practice it a few times and you will get it. And that is correct. We have to note, just like with the perpetuity, this formula here again assumes that the first payment starts at time t equals 1. So the next time period. We, if we today are in time 0, then it will start in time 1. And now it's time to give an example of how such annuity can be calculated. Consider in this case, it's an annual annuity, so you pay a cash flow once a year. We have 10 equal cash flows of 590 euros. We exceed the first cash flow in exactly one year, so we have no problem in terms of the formula. We have to make no conversions. The interest rate is now 2.3% this example. What's the value of this annuity? Well, what we can do is simply just take the standard formula, as we have here. So look on the screen, we put in the formula. We just attach all the numbers there. So C is now 590. R is now converted properly into decimal numbers, of course, 0 0.023. And we raise it to the power of 10. Put all this in and we get an amount of 5,217. This looks a little more involved maybe, but you can also do it easy because if you just want to put it in a calcula calculator, you can just do like that. And that's simply just it. So I would highly recommend you practice putting this into a calculator in a more flat structure as you see right here. It's actually not that difficult to do. Just practice it a few times and you got it. Notice this is just a value, the present value of annuity. You can also calculate 
a lot of other values of an annuity, something we're going to be looking at in a future episode. With that said, that was all I have for you for this time. I hope you enjoyed this class here, and I hope to see you back for another class in Stephen's Classroom. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.